Maybe. Hello. Welcome to Mari Mar's Spanish Table. We may or may not be live. And uh, we are live. Just, just in case we're So, ready. yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Here we go. Uh, cheers to Friday. Thank goodness. Uh, we yes, made it to Friday. Friday at 5 p.m. And to this, I've been looking forward to this for what now? Two, three weeks, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. We took a little hiatus. Um, we have moved to first Fridays of the month, um, mm -hmm. and we did a really fun paella episode, which that's right. we'll tell you more about. But first off, let's toast uh, with a glass of wine. Okay. Um, our La Masia Chardonnay. Yes. And we're so excited to have you join us. Yeah, we've missed you, and uh, cheers. Cheers to cheers. summertime. And oh boy, do we have a great recipe for you today. Mom, what are we cooking? Slash, I mean, let's be honest, what are you cooking? <laughs> no, you're going to help me. Because look at all these ingredients. Can Lots of tell? ingredients. Oh, no, you can't tell, right? Well, anyway, you'll see them. And um, and anyways, it's called zarzuela. It's Catalan for zarzuela in Castilian Spanish. And, and that's not a lisp. No, that's right. It's I know. Lisp. People it's always not... say it's a lisp. It's, a, it's an accent. It's yeah, not a lisp. Yeah, it's yeah, an okay. accent. It's a, uh, it's a shellfish stew. Sarsuela, the marisque in Catalan, and um, so it's with a real S in Catalan, right? And uh, it's from my The Catalan Country Kitchen book, and uh, with, uh, uh, it, it's in the website, right? Yes, recipe. yes, yes, okay, so you've right. got, um, yeah, you've got all the links to the recipe and the wines in the content of the post, Yeah. and um, so tell us, okay, so this yes. is a shellfish stew, Yes. and, and uh, what's the origin? This name, um, what does zarzuela oh, mean? That's right. Well, uh, zarzuela is like a, in, in Spain, is like a live operator. Oh. And uh, yes. And, uh, <laughs> that's funny because <laughs> I know zarzuela as a shellfish stew. So oh, really? That's funny. It's yeah, funny yeah. to me to think that that's so an it's, uh, it's it's just because it, it's just such a mixture of ingredients and it all goes into the pot and you can change the ingredients, you can vary them. I mean, I put here what I found in the market that was best. And, uh, you know, like we have clams and mussels and, and scallops and shrimp and, and rock shrimp and um, and then, you know, spices and and, uh, and, and herbs. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's really wonderful. And, and it, this is really all shellfish that is traditional to the Mediterranean, right? That's right. And that's why you find similar dishes in Italy, the Chopin. Chopino. Yes. Chopino. Uh -huh. Yum. And the mm -hmm. even more famous French. The bouillabaisse. Bouillabaisse. Exactly. Bouillabaisse. So, or in Spanish, we would, say, we would say a bouillabaisse. And, so that's, uh, and that's because it goes. So then what's the difference? Sorry. I well, no, because I was going to explain that it goes back to the 400 years or so that uh, Catalonia, well, the Catalan country was really part of uh, not only Catalonia in Spain, but also the south of France mm -hmm. and the northwest of Italy. Uh -huh. So it was all the same region. So you find dishes that really have very much the same origin. Mm -hmm. The only thing with Chopino is it doesn't have, oh, I forgot what it is. It's a tomato-based broth. Yes, that's right. I did look this up. Yeah, she has a better memory sure. than I do. And uh, then what defines a bouillabaisse? Le bouillabaisse. Oh, <laughs> you want bouillabaisse. me to say? Yeah, You're yeah. supposed to be the authority, not me. So bouillabaisse <laughs> is a uh, fish stock-based broth. Uh, ah. That then you add like chunks of tomato in and saffron. And saffron, exactly. Yeah. And, and then what, saffron, what distinguishes a saffron? Exactly. So ours is not only saffron, but a wonderful um, serrano ham from mm. Spain. Yum, yum. And you almonds. always have to put some jamón in. Absolutely. And uh, almonds, which have been um, pulverized. Right, ground. ground. Thank you very much. And, uh, and, yeah, and of course, you know, our classical Catalan herbs, thyme and rosemary from the garden. Or are those not classic international herbs? Uh, I'm these being are annoying very, this time. These are very, yeah, very Catalan. Annoying. These are very Catalan, <laughs> okay. Christina. We have thyme soup and we have rosemary, many things. Yeah, and, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, just trust right. me. Uh, anyway, so we're yeah. going to get started. Should we get started? Also, yes. let us know um, who's who's watching. Let us know who's there and where you're watching from. We love we love to know. Okay, and say hello. So first, we have here some. I, I kind of did have the recipe through a part, so I can show you better. This is some um, onion and garlic, right? That has been um, uh, 
Right. Sauteed. Well, sauteed, yeah, that's right. But first, uh, pulverized, what's the word? Girl. Diced. Diced. Um, yeah, uh, well, cuisinar, right? And uh, and so then we have added the um, tomatoes, right? And the ham. And uh, because that takes quite a while. So we add the tomato and we let it reduce, reduce, reduce until it looks like that, okay? So mm. here's the tomato with the ham mm -hmm. and, um, and, um, and it's been, it's, so this is half the recipe again. But we're gonna, okay. when you talk about the wine, we're gonna get started with this so we are at the same time. Yeah, okay? so we, so we yeah, add the, the bell pepper, almonds. Yeah, but not yet. First oh. I'm gonna put this in while you talk about the wine. Okay, all right, so all right. right. Well, um, and it's also, um, well, I guess I'll talk about the wine then. So the La Masia Chardonnay, um, our first wine, this is our 2018, and this is our original wine that we started producing from day one, and by we, I mean my mom. Uh, our first vintage was 89, and this is our traditional barrel fermented Chardonnay, uh, named after the winery, which is built in the style of a Masia, or Catalan farmhouse. There's there's a close-up of the label, our newer style label, which is a little more modern. And so the deal with the La Masia Chardonnay, barrel fermented, aged in French oak, 30% uh, new oak, about nine months on the lees. And um, so this is a wine that really, the folk, we always want, I mean, we our focus is always on the vineyard, and so we don't want to lose the fruit but we get a little more, well, the influence of the oak. So I'm still getting can I, some peach and can I interrupt you? lemon, so, lemon custard and, um, and hazelnut. How do you like the wine? I love it. I've always liked this wine. Mm. Ever since I produced the first vintage in 1989. But it's not filling, but still crisp, nice, nice acidity. Okay, I'm interrupting. Officially. I had so, noticed. I had noticed. <laughs> so this is the tomato, okay, the way it looks, with the ham here. So I'm going to reduce this until it looks like the one that I showed you. Okay. And then, now, I'm going to add here, the one that I showed you, imagine that this is twice the size, and we're going to add everything. We're going to add here the, um, uh, yeah, the bell peppers, the so they've been, as you saw, kind of in strips, and the almonds, and which have been pulverized, and then the uh, saffron, which of course we will first kind of go like that, so that with the liquid they release their flavor, of the lovely strands, two bay leaves. Um, Should I stir that? Yes, thank you. Okay. There you go. Oh, right. Salt, pepper. And then there's a restaurant that you were inspired by for this dish, right? Oh, that's right, yes. There's a restaurant in, um, in, um, uh, Sitges. Uh, actually, no, I'm so sorry. The town just south of Sitges, which is where I had my home in Spain, and, uh, it, uh, it's called Pichirot. Pichirot means, uh, really in very kind of coarse language, uh, 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 Kind of a, um, a, a fish, Something fish, fish monger. Yeah, ah. fish monger. And uh, so, so yeah, and they, 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 they were just the best, the best uh, seafood restaurant. Of course, it's a, uh, a, a village that was a village of fishermen, you know, when I was little, right? So not that long ago. So I also put <laughs> some, sure some hot pepper, the God, with daughters like that, who needs any uh -huh. And... Yeah, that because it has to reduce. And so here's the um, thyme. Mm, doesn't smell good. Mm, it does, thyme. it does. Just picked it up this afternoon. And I must say this dish, well, it's yeah, it's yeah, good it all year round, but I don't know. Shellfish in the summertime, I feel like shellfish really... Yeah, so this is homemade fish stock, okay, fumé, which really makes a big which difference. Which is in your book, tell them. Absolutely, the recipe is in the book. And then this is some wonderful wine, of course, some of that wine that um, I don't give you the recipe for, but you can get it. And so we're going to mix all this, and we're going to, I think I put everything, oh, and the lemon juice. And then there's some lemon juice here, um, a little bit of lemon juice, and here. Very cute. Isn't it cute? But I think I didn't forget anything, did I? And now we're bringing it to a bowl. Let's be sure okay. that we didn't forget. Well, Okay, well, let me put this in the back. Put this one here. Okay. 
and it's really um it's really so with with these stews i think like it goes for i don't know your boeuf bourguignon all all these different types of stews same with tatuela bouillabaisse um chopino that they're very malleable recipes um so really you can uh, well, you can make substitutions, you can add and, um, and substitute things. So, um, what would, for example, like, what are the non-negotiables here in, in terms of substitutions? Mm, and what are any kind of shellfish. Okay. Any so really shell. like that whole list of, yeah. of ingredients on the shellfish, just put in whatever you feel yeah. like. Yeah. But I would say plums and mussels and then, uh, shrimp, like for instance, in in, you know, you can also put lobster if you like, but mm. you know, probably, you know, that that would not be a classic. But shrimp, of course, in Spain we have langoustine, also mm. which is so good. Um, and langoustine, the fresh. yeah, langoustine. Yes, and then what I'm going to show you also for the scallops, what I do I is that I, I warm them, I uh, kind of mark them. So I'm going to put them on the grill for a little bit. Oh, look, or you want me that? What? Well, all all our friends who have tuned in, hello oh. to Jir, all the way from Oslo. I hope I'm pronouncing your name all right. This sounds like a late evening for you, but I hope I'm so glad that you've joined us. David Clardy, so good to to have you, and we are so excited to cook paella with you last time. Bonnie in Vail. Um, we love Vail. We love Vail. So good to have you, Bonnie. Sam and Coralie are faithful friends, cooking cooking friends, and Ricky in oh Ricky in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I remember we worked together. I visited accounts with you, if I recall correctly. Um, and Tim in Denmark. I think Tim is a Psalm um, in Denmark, if I'm not mistaken. So good to have you. And uh, okay, so what next? Um. More Where wine. are we? Okay, yes. We are uh, down here. So now okay. we are. Um, but first I have to bring to a boil. So we, we're bringing these to a boil now. And I am going to, and you know what? I forgot to take the, the lid of the, of the skin. I'm sorry about that. So. The lid is important. The lid is important. And um, yeah, let us know what have you been enjoying thinking um, you know, over these past several months, I hear from a lot of friends that, oh, I've been uh, improving my cooking skills, all this cooking at home. Let us know what, what you enjoy cooking. We also love that um, we did a, for the first time, we had a vote on which recipe should be featured on our cooking show. And um, so this, Stu was uh, the number one winner, in fact, by a pretty, pretty wide margin. Um, mm -hmm. And it was so great. We had like almost 100 people fill out the Google form. We did Instagram poll and um, lots of, yeah, it was so fun to see all the Okay, all the so I'm going to have the scallop to the grill. You think okay. you could see the grill? Mm, not really. Not so okay. the scallops go on the grill just to kind of like not. sear them. Yes, just to sear them, exactly. Now, All right. right, and I think this is when our second and that will be a little black, okay? Then we like up. this sear, ah. and then they will go up into the stew. Because you know the reason is because the scallops can overcook very quickly, so I like to um, pre-cook them like that. Also, they get this nice color from the from the lines of the um, of the uh, grill. I and love I scallops. Love, love, uh, love scallops. Okay, let me just I mean, there are a few things that I don't enjoy eating, very few. Okay, so now that this is brought to a boil, we're going to put the mussels and clams in here and cover it so that they will open by themselves. So our second wine is our Dobles Lias Chardonnay. This is our 2015, um, it is a, technically it is a club exclusive wine for all of our club members tuning in, you know all about it, um, you have access to it, um, everyone has access to it for a limited time, and this is a wine, it's very labor intensive to produce, here you want to try some, Mom? Oh, it's yes. very labor intensive to produce, what we do is we 
double the lees, that's the name in Spanish, and the lees is the yeast that falls to the bottom of the barrel during fermentation that uh, as it kind of, uh, well, it dies and falls to the bottom after doing its part and converting sugar into alcohol. And so this sediment of lees at the bottom of the barrel, as it breaks down um, a process called autolysis, the cells, they release amino acids. And so this really contributes to the texture of the wine um, and the mouthfeel and adds um, other elements uh, like like a like a creaminess as well. Um, so it's really it's really interesting. And what we do, so we double the lees um, and then leave it another season. So it spends a total of 17 months uh, on the lees. And this is how the scallops should look. The don't smell good? They do. They do. I'm getting hungry. Yep. I'm getting hungry. Mm. And that's the sausage ready, so we will just add it. So the dobles lias, um, this is, uh, I get still some nice citrus notes. Also that flan, that kind of caramel notes. Hmm. It's very creamy on the palate and mouth filling. Um, the really long finish. So this is definitely a wine for the, um, the traditional Chardonnay drinkers, Chardonnay lovers. Um, they're really, yeah, really interesting. It's the same, the same fruit in both of these wines and different, different treatments in the cellar. Okay, let's see what. Uh, okay, what so do we have next? Ready because the clamps and muscles are opening, and you're gonna break that because that's okay. my specialty. And so. That is true. Mom does have a specialty yeah, yeah. of breaking glasses, uh, wine glasses. Um, so, <laughs> so when we're when we have dinner at home, just the two of us. Uh, let's put it this way: she's not drinking out of these glasses. Uh, <laughs> she makes me drink with govino sometimes. And what would you say? What would you say you miss most in terms of the shellfish from 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 Spain? I mean, growing up with that beautiful shellfish. Oh, the, the shrimp, uh, the shrimp, and the gambas, the gambas. prawns. They're like much oh, bigger than they are. And here. and the spiny lobster. You Ooh. see the, the seafood actually, especially the, yeah, the seafood and the shellfish is all different in the Mediterranean than it is say and in the north of Spain. The north of Spain is the Cantabric Sea, and the Mediterranean is Barcelona and Carlonia, right? And so um, we have the spiny lobster that's so delish. Mm. And, and in, um, and in, uh, in uh, the Cantabric, we have the, um, the uh, like the Maine lobster. Ah, right? see, I'm so surprised. I thought Maine lobster would only be found like on the Atlantic coast. Uh -huh. Little did oh. I know. Uh, uh, I heard you talk about the Dobles Lias. Yeah. Um, can you hear me if I do this? Okay. Maybe. So, uh, and also, do pipe in with questions and comments. Let us know if you're wondering what to substitute or how to adapt this recipe at home. What What did you want so to say? So, I want to say that we started with the Dobles Lias back in, um, in 1998. It was the first wine that we did a special bottling of. Mm -hmm. So, we only had produced a Chardonnay and a Pinot Noir. Yep, one vineyard, yep. one Chardonnay, one Pinot Noir. Exactly. Those were the days. Yep, yep. Those yep. were the days. Life was so simple. <laughs> and at the beginning, I don't know if I've already told in this program that we, um, to, to, to ship you or to sell you a case of Pinot Noir to distributors, you had to buy two cases of Chardonnay. And Ooh. it went very, very well. Oh boy, yeah. and that was before Sideways even? Yeah, that was before Sideways. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, I should have been in charge of sales and marketing back then. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, how come and I wasn't taking care of it? We then? had a great score. We had guess what? A 91. Today, a 91 is like, eh. Well, in those days, Pinot Noir never got mm. even a 90. Mm. So everybody wanted our Pinot Noir. Well, and everybody so, still wants our Pinot Noir. Yeah, let's true, let's be true. clear. Let's uh, be clear. And yeah, we love, love. And we love, I mean, this, this is really. We love sharing our wines and kind of our heritage and our story and and we really we want to welcome you into our home and um and are so glad that you that you've joined us let's see what else um okay, what else are we going to 
I have are we two almost done? I have two cars that didn't open. So those I'm going to set aside. If, if uh, mushrooms or plants ah. don't open, ah. mm, just don't. Yeah, don't use it. Maybe don't worry. Yeah. And so speaking now, of... We're going to add... Oh, yeah, go ahead. But we're going to add the, the tomato sauce from the beginning mm. so we can have the full recipe. Mm. Okay. Okay. Uh, you want help? Yes. Okay. Oh, this is so much. Okay. Oh, 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 it's a cute bird. Okay, yeah. who cares? Okay. Ouch. Ouch. Good thing I didn't drop that. <laughs> um, I have to say, in terms of, because I didn't ask myself this, what, what shellfish do I love the most when I'm in Spain? In terms of, like, the, how the, well, it really shines over there. Even though we have great, great food and ingredients here, I love these, what they're called are navajas. Uh, yeah. Razor clams, right? Yeah, in English. Razor clams. And yeah. so it's this like long, yeah, I don't know how to call it, but it's kind of like a clam that's this size. Yeah, like a pencil. Yeah. Like a, 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 it's yeah. so good. It's so good. I love yeah. those. Um, and then I grew up with um, Abuelita, uh, my grandmother. My favorite fish was always lenguado, sol. Uh, mm, oh, just yes. like just that's grilled true. really that's quick true. and it's yeah. just so flavorful. Yeah. So also another story about Douglas Lias. Mm. So it was really inspired by some tests that I had um, done uh, in Spain. My my brother, excuse me, my brother and his team had done some tests with um, with uh, doubling the leaves. Ah, okay. And uh, yeah, and so yeah. we decided to okay, you know, we'll we'll um, make it into a wine. Mm. Yeah. Are we ready good. to start tasting a little? We have. Uh, Two minutes to go. Oh, okay, that's all right. I think it looks ready to me. Uh, I'm hungry. Wait, you have to put all this. Okay, now, all right. Now we're gonna put the rock shrimp. Okay. And the um the uh, uh prawns and okay. the and the scallops. Okay. Yum. And uh, okay, we got a couple questions. Uh, what side dish do you recommend with this? Oh, there's no side dish. Bread. Oh. All right. Lots okay. <laughs> that was a that was a very like. Well, what are you? What? How would a side dish go? Bread and what we do in Spain. I think it's more of a European thing. Is is dipping the in the sauce with the bread, um, which is uh, I think has become more common in the U.S. But I know that uh, yeah, yeah. wasn't always the case. Um, so accompany it with some nice nice fluffy bread. And let's see, what wine, what white wine do you add to the stew? Well, let me see if I can answer this and you agree or disagree. I would say that probably like any decent white wine will go well here. Um, if it's like relatively, relatively well, nice wine. I have to no? tell you okay, because, fine. well, of course, no, she's right. Because you mean, don't you don't get the flavors of the wine. That's right. But since we opened that bottle, oh, you I, use the delicious. Um, yes. No, not the delicious. Oh, the, the, the La Masia. La Masia. Yeah. You put. Oh it was, boy! It's just you saw. It wasn't too much, right? <laughs> but you know, we still have to have a bottle for dinner. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. So that so. meant we moved the clams, but they're already moving. So now it's cooking uh, with the shellfish and such. And oh, and I'm gonna add this here, and that's it. So that's it. So we're already done. God, this is so complicated. It's so much tough. It's more complicated than usual. All right. Well, let's have a bite and try. Try it. Yum yum. All right. Mm. Okay, the smells are. Uh, the odors are quite and you quite the bay leaves. Of okay. Course. Okay. Also, our number two voted uh, or most popular recipe that we, because we gave four options in the voting, and so our number two was a blackberry flan, fresh blackberry um, yeah. with a blackberry cassis coulis, yeah. and so we will be doing that on our next Facebook Live, um, again, first Friday of mm -hmm. September. That'll be September 4th at... 5 p.m. Pacific, our blackberry flan with, I guess we haven't decided what oh, pairs Can with. you move the lemon thingy? Look at this. Can you Ooh. see? That's what it looks like. Oh, so boy, now, oh boy. I was going to put it yeah. here. Can we get a little, yeah, without it. it. There so we I go. was going to put it in this classic mm. uh, cazuela or cazuela or ca cazuela? Is it English? 
casserole. Yeah. Okay. Isn't it cute? But you know what? We're gonna just serve it. Mm -hmm. Isn't that cute? I think like I'm that? ready for a bite. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, wait, okay, wait. okay fine. This guy's it's not like good. I've said it like ten times. Right? That's right. That's right. Too many times. As if I'm starved. Kind of like the dogs that tell you. <laughs> tell us. Okay. It's ready for a picture. Mm, yum, yum. Okay. We have to try it with the two Chardonnay's. Yes. And decide which one we like. Mm -hmm. Boy, really, time flies when you're having fun. I didn't realize it does. the time was flying so much. What do you want to do? Go. Okay, great. Okay, let's see you with the La Masia. Mmm, I'm going to scallop with this. It's going to be a little hot, huh? Mm -hmm. No? Just, mm, not the scallop. Mmm. And you get some spiciness from... From the saffron, from mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. well, black pepper. What else adds to that? Because it's quite a hearty, the almonds make the it almond, quite hearty. And, and the uh, thyme and rosemary. Mm -hmm. It's really flavorful. Yeah. I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I, can. I guess I should be able to pick it out. It uh, mm, goes beautifully with the La Masia. Let's see about. You're supposed to say, yes, I yeah. do. <laughs> yeah, I like it with the double slit very mm. much, but I think I will like it. Too, because I think it great. I think the Dobles Lias sings especially with mm -hmm. this dish. Mm, one because of the because of the fullness. Mm -hmm. Again, this is such like a hearty, mm -hmm. um, really nice spices, and I think the fullness and the creaminess of the Dobles Lias. But I love it with the with the La Masia. Hey, La Masia. Again, hey. like our usual conclusion is that we'll have one of each. That's right. Exactly. Yeah, all to that. So I, um, I when I tell you that once when in doing that you would have in Spain is the um, squid, and uh, squid of course in Spain can be fresh mm. and it, it takes forever to clean. Of course, you have to do it at home. And um, but here the squid is, is a little rubbery. So instead of that, I use rock shrimp. So they're so good. They add so some good. nice crunch yeah, too. Yeah. Okay, well, I okay. think it's just about time for us to wrap up. We're going to stop telling you how much we are enjoying this food and wine and let you enjoy your food and wine. And tune back in September 4th for Blackberry Flan. And we have our next episode of our more interactive paella episode oh, Zoom paella. on Zoom. Right. Yes, we did our first a couple weeks ago and had so much fun. fun. Right. So if you want to learn to make paella, you want to learn more about it from the master, in my humble opinion. Are we having a... a, a, a We're going to vote. Yeah. Vote? So okay. be sure if you're not getting our emails, be sure to message us or comment with your email so we can add you to our email list. You can vote. And you can join us and get the uh, wines. Uh, uh, is, is black rice a possibility? And that's on September 9th is our paella Zoom. Can we, can we vote for yeah, black, black rice? rice squidding paella. Yes. Oh, yeah, black rice paella. Because my daughter thinks that Americans will not like the black rice. No, that's not true. I just think really? it's hard to find. Oh, really? But that's all right. Okay, okay. For next time, cheers okay. and have a, have a great weekend. Have a great weekend. <laughs>